morning everybody we'll wait for a few more minutes before others join uh, before we kick off with our proceedings it's just it's just going to be about 10 o'clock maybe we can have just one more round of your uh, corporate video paul
The whole purpose of this webinar is to give an overview of what the Merchant Navy is all about. And good morning once again for having spared your time on a Saturday morning amidst all your other important work. Though most of us are locked down in our houses, I'm quite sure that we have our own schedule. And uh, we hope that at the end of the session, you have a fair idea of what Merchant Navy is all about. It's a career which can be very, very rewarding, provided you put your heart and soul to it. I mean, that's the case with every career. But this is all the more important in the sense that here you are going to be dealing with the nature and you're not going to be on land, you're going to be on board a ship. Now, how we are going to take this webinar forward today is by way of a panel discussion with two more of my colleagues to give an overview of all the courses what we are conducting in this particular campus. Interspread with three of our cadets who have passed out from our college, who are presently pursuing their career out at sea, to get a first-hand, say from the horse's mouth, as what they feel about the whole career and their life. I'm quite sure all of you will definitely have some questions to ask. Feel free. You can put them there in the chat box address to questions which will be answered by us on a time to time basis and we would also give you ample time to think about questions after listening to us and you can raise your hand we will unmute you you can also raise your questions so that we can see each other which is always the best thing to do there is nothing like seeing a face and answering. 
despite the distance between us. During the panel discussion, we would keep you all muted so that we all can hear what the panelists talk about. And to kick it off, before I say something more, let's have the blessings of God by way of an invocation, and then we will move forward. Request Paul to play the invocation, please. asking questions openly in between, not because of anything else, not because that we cannot answer the questions, but the flow of the whole webinar will be upset. And we also realize we have indulged in requesting you to attend the webinar to make it worthwhile as what we all do we are also giving a, some sort of a sop in our fees for various courses. We have got about six different courses running between us, running between four months into four years. So we do have a system of, if you do book your seat during the period from today till 1800 hours on Monday, if you book your seat with a booking amount of 50,000 rupees, we are ready to give you a discount. The two courses which run in two years, basically three years and four years, we will give you a discount of 15,000 rupees from the total course fees. We also have one course which is of one year duration we will give you a discount of 10,000 rupees. We have two courses, one of six and one of four months duration, where we will give you a discount on the spot booking of 5,000 rupees. And we also have a month old course for the catering personnel, where we will give you a 2,500 rupees discounts on the course fees. I will repeat this discount once again before we part. And we would be very happy to have your attention during the seminar and also ask questions as you feel like. So before, without much ado, let me introduce two of my panelists. One, Mr. Ganapati Rao. Hello. A very, very senior chief engineer who has sailed out at sea as a chief engineer, has worked in ship owning companies, has been involved in commercial shipping in terms of chartering. And now he is also spending a lot of time with us, with the boys, to impart the knowledge not only of technical nature, but also of commercial nature. We have one more panelist, Mr. Sabil Mohammed, another senior person from the next side who has spent quite some time out at sea. And now, for the sake of his young children, he is spending time with us in the college, imparting his knowledge. 
and one of those people who has got a lot of enthusiasm and I must admit is also a good character. So if you can't find him in the college, you can find him in the cricket field, though it is difficult nowadays, but he managed to squeeze in somewhere. So to kick off, let me first come to you, Sabil. May I request you to throw some light on the course, what we call a BSc nautical science, as what it takes to be in and what it takes to be to reach the pinnacle of the career. Yes, Abhi. Good morning, uh, my colleagues. Uh, good morning, enthusiastic parents and curious students who just pass out from the 12th standard and, uh, you know, looking for a fantastic and, you know, uh, uh, ecstatic career or a profession, I would say. I'm going to take you, uh, take you to a tour of uh, the process of getting into BSc Nautical Science and the progression from there on. Gentlemen, uh, in Merchant Navy on shipping, we have main two, uh, two categories. You can call it deck department and engine department. So to get into deck department, navigating officers, deck officers, whatever you call it, you have to do a course called BSc Nautical Science. The eligibility criteria is 12th standard pass with PCM of 60 percentage, which is physics, chemistry, and maths, aggregate of 60, and in language English, 50 percent. So, if you have this eligibility, you can appear for this IMU CT exam. Once you are through, you will be joining college to do BSc in nautical science, which is of a three years duration. After completing this three years clerk college, you will be issued a certificate of merit of BSc Nautical Science by IMU, which is Indian Maritime University. Gentlemen, with your performance, you know, your uh, overall performance, including academic as well as discipline, physical, extracurricular activities, you will be lined up for the interviews. You will be attending campus interviews. You will be attending interviews all over to get selected or placed on a shipping company. Once you are through that level, you will be joining as deck cadet on board the ship, various type of ship, where you will be trained theoretically as well as practically to navigate and to sail as deck officers. Gentlemen, there is a required sea time or experience, you can say in a layman word, which is of 12 months after this course. So once you serve or train 12 months on board the ship, you will come back to the land and you will be appearing the second mate certificate of competency exams conducted by government of India, which is actually a written exam plus an oral. Once you pass this judgment, you will become a navigating officer. You will be given a certificate of competency second officer, where which makes you qualified to sail as navigating officer on board the ship. You will be joining as third officer first, and with with you know your performance and the company criteria and all, you will be promoted as second officer, you know during process or the same contract, second contract with respect to your, your criteria and the performance. Gentlemen, there also, with this second officer COC, you will have a required sea time. Once you finish that required sea time of 18 months, you will be eligible to appear for the certificate of competency exam of chief officers, or first mate, you can call it. You come back again after doing a couple of shifts, you again appear for these exams and once you clear that gentlemen you become you will be you know issued the certificate of competency chief officers with your performance and your metrics requirements of company and various requirements of other aspects you will be promoted as chief officer gentlemen where which is a big jump and you will you will be in the league of management officers management level officers and chiefs right from there, again, with the NFC time experience, you come back again and you can appear for the 
captain is master certificate of competency gentlemen once you clear this or written an oral exams you will be titled as captain so and so captain x y z captain the bill you know so after that you go back to ship again with your performance and metric requirements gentlemen you will take over the command of the ship so if your qualification is captain zabi or captain x y z on board the ship you will be master you know in a professional field one of the most uh, flashy powerful rank i would i should say so welcome uh, all my young juniors welcome if you're interested i hope you are definitely interested and if this is your call please join bsc medical science thank you very much I am mute. Yeah, thanks, uh, Sabi. Sorry about it. One of those glitches where you tend to forget that you are muted. You are talking to your own self, yes. but at the same time, you might as well get used to it. This what you will do on board a ship as well. You don't have too many people to talk about. But at the same time, Sabi, may I request you to throw some light? What are the qualities? that you have imbibed during this training as well as sailing out at sea because everyone must be wondering it, it it's not normal for a man to be floating you're a fish it's fine but you are a human being you walk on the land god has given you legs not fins to float around but at the same time what is it that makes you tick out at sea could you throw some light on that to sabil yes sir so boys is it we all know that we human beings are designed to be on land now some of you like us if you have desired to you know uh, go to the ship from a human being you know you will be called as a seaman or a seafarer right now gentlemen it is an adventurous job which requires a lot of challenges to be faced once you attend once you join this course bsc nautical science or any other courses in college before we start anything theoretically or technical knowledge what we going to do first is we will we will train you to gain a quality which is called olq i repeat olq you know if i if i say it's officer like quality as a person we will mold you to gain that quality of an officer yeah which is a long process but we, from the budding stage itself we will start training on this so everything when you, you know after this after the training which has got physical education like you know, a lot of physical training you know to make sure that you're fit physically to make sure that you're fit mentally we make sure that you are ready to you know uh, take on the adversities we make sure that you always think twice before you take any action we make sure that you always assess the risk factor before you do something you know all these qualities will will you will mold you will be molded in the college which is these qualities are essential to make you a, a you know a perfect seafarer these qualities you will get from the college itself we our experienced faculties who has been out at sea for a very long period of time will help you to do that along with other academical uh, faculties plus our very well experienced wardens who will be taking care of disciplinary actions to to next stage from there you go to the ship you take on this mighty ocean you you see the world in a different way and you yeah when you have 360 degree you know around you just water and you have 20 people to talk to you know you learn you you learn this abilities of you know survival yeah there's a saying that survival of the fittest gentlemen during this progression of your your career trust me you going to be the hard most hardcore human beings alive in this world one more thing which is 
the rules and regulations compliance. Right from the beginning in the college, you know, you will have this parameter training. You know, you have to shave. I'm not shaved now, but in the beginning stage, you have to shave, you have to be in uniform. We check your uniform standards. We make sure that your shoe is polished. You know, the warden has to see his face on the shoe. All these things, just to make sure that we have that discipline factor inside you, which will make you comply with the rules and regulations out at sea, which is very, very important and vital. Once you have this quality gentleman, as a human being, as a man, as a professional, you will grow. You always can see the difference between a, a, no, a layman and a seafarer. The, he'll possess some qualities which is very difficult to, you know, uh, uh, grow. It. If nothing gives you a pride, gentlemen, I'll tell you one thing. These applets and this certificate of competency issued by government of India with this, this is what you live for. This pride will always make you a law-abiding citizen, a person who is always compliant. You'll, you'll be a better son, you'll be a better husband, you'll be a better boyfriend, you know, all, and on top of that, you'll be a better human. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Abhil. That was very well said. Now that the interest has been evinced in, I hope, all, all the participants, now I request one of our cadets who passed out last year to share his experiences what the life has been from the time he joined this college in 2016. He has already stepped on board. He has done a voyage or a contract, what we call for about seven months, and he has come back on a furlough home. May I now request our cadet Tojo Vargis to show, share his experiences with everyone. Tojo, you're on. Good morning, everyone. I'm uh, Tojo Thomas Vargis. I joined HIMD in 2016 and passed out in 2019. I was uh, placed with an open interview in 2019 itself in MOL shipping. I already completed a seven month uh, contract, which began in December, this last December. I worked on board a container ship. I got this opportunity because of HIMD College. HIMD is a great institute, it has very well qualified and experienced faculties for uh, both marine and non-marine subjects, as you could see, Sabine, sir, and uh, have a very good infrastructure also. I basically opted for Merchant Navy because it is one of the very few courses which could give you a very, uh, in the youthful life itself, you could give you a very thrilling career and a very adventurous career also. And at the same time, a very good pay scale. I would say very good pay scale. Uh, and uh, it also enabled me to travel around the world and roam a lot. I got a lot of shore leaves. I visited a lot of countries in the seven months itself. And I joined BSc in optical science in uh, HIMD rather than any other DNS or any other course because I got at the same time get a degree certificate and also have a three year very good college life, which was filled with its own thrills. But also at the same time, a very strict curriculum uh, was also followed, discipline curriculum. Uh, my experience on board was good. In fact, uh, very good. I had a relaxed, but at the same time, a very responsible job on board. Uh, my uh, rest of the crew were Russians and Filipinos. Uh, they were very good. The officers were also supportive, like the faculties on HIMD. Mm -hmm. The life on board is not stressful, as everyone says it is. The atmosphere on board is mostly relaxed almost all the time. And you can have your fair share of fun and entertainment activities. Uh, we had game rooms, mini theaters, basketball court, PS4, 360, Xbox 360, everything you have, your own fun, you can have everything. Your basketball court on board, you have gym on board, uh, you have the TT on board. So altogether, I would suggest Merchant Navy as a very good profession and also HMD as an institute where you could chase those dreams. Thanks, Tojo. One of those boys who had spent three years with us and gone out to sea and has already done a successful. Hopefully all going well, he will do one more contract before he gets down for his uh, next milestone of appearing for his second mate and then move on in his career. 
Now, may I request now, Mr. Ganapati Rao, to throw some light. What do you feel? Now, we talked about one arm of the body being the deck side. The other arm is obviously. Now, I didn't want to say the right and the left. Both are same as far well as I'm concerned. You need two good arms to make the body a complete body. So, coming from the technical background, could you throw some light on how the progression takes place in the engineering section, either a BTEC or a GME? Over to you, Mr. Rao. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the most exclusive and glamorous world of marine engineering. And uh, it's one profession which there is a lot of alignment of passion, dedication, and commitment. And it makes the man out of the boys. It makes us a true professional. And we'll be able to take the world on its own terms. That's the beauty of marine engineering. And coming to the career path of it, I would like to say that there is a stream called BTEC Marine Engineering, that's four years course. And there is another course called Graduate Marine Engineering, that is one year course in the college campus. And for BTEC, PC qualification of 12th standard is uh, required with 60% of uh, PCM and 50% in English. For these Graduate Marine Engineering examinations, they, they have to be graduates and it, this is basically a postgraduate diploma and this course is of two semesters that's for one year having done all this they'll be stepping on the boat ships as trainee marine engineer and they'll be serving as trainee marine engineer for six months and then they get down for their class four examination and they will finish that examination there is under the directorate general of shipping and after that, they join back as class four engineers. And depending upon the merit and vacancies, they'll be promoted as third engineers. Meanwhile, they'll finish out the specified time, so required to appear for second engineer's examination. And after they finish the second engineer's time, they will also finish the second engineer's examination. That's a management examination. From operations, they'll be getting into the eclipse of management. And after that, again, they'll have to sail on board ships for about 18 months, after which, again, they'll be join, uh, they'll be appearing for an examination in Directorate General of Shipping. And then after they pass the examination and they get promoted, they'll become four stripers, like what you see can you can see on my shoulders. So that's the pinnacle of success in marine engineering. And they can work as marine engineer on board ships of various uh, types of cargoes. If they are planning to come back ashore, there is again a sea of opportunities available, like joining as a technical manager or a marine superintendent in shipping companies. They can also join in what you call uh, uh, power plants. They can join as classification surveyors. They can join in the flag administration as mercantile marine department. There is so many of avenues are there. And this is how the career progression in marine engineering is all about. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rob. I mean, that that's gives an ample opportunity for people to dwell upon. We also have a cadet who had pursued his BTEC with us and who has also been sailing, has just come back. Though we wanted to get him speak to all of you live due to some unforeseen circumstances, you can only hear his voice but see his photograph as well. Paul, could you play up that audio of uh, Patra? Hello, buddies. This is Amal Patra, the next BTEC cadet of HIMT. And I'm currently working in Tom Shipping. Well, guys, if you all are here, then I will ask you all to not look back at all. Yes, keep it Keep that in your mind. Don't look back because you have just selected one of the finest fields in today's world. Merchant Navy is all you could ask for as a career. And I, I'll say it that I'm living a dream. And I will thank it to my college HIMT for playing a big role in it. Guys, uh, Merchant Navy is quite a fulfilling job. All you need is the passion to live in. I guess it's the only field out there where you get the job satisfaction. 
where you can live a life which no one else can ever think about i repeat it again just don't look back from here now you guys are in a point where selecting college is a is a mess it's completely a mess well if i'll go by my college uh, i'll always admit it that it has the best of gurus which you will ever get in all of india i guess because apart from everything at the end of the day which will matter in this field is the knowledge which you have gained in the college let it be the sports let it be all other facilities no one is going to ask you a bit about it in the ship all everyone cares about is the knowledge which you have gained it when well, it's not only the gurus who will give everything to you it's your talent which by the support of the gurus will become handy in your future and if you want that support then i guess a champ is the best place but never forget that talent comes handy only if given an opportunity talking about opportunities well i got one and i grabbed it so it's upon you cause not mm-hmm. everyone is going to get the same opportunity every time it's you who have to fight for that single opportunity to get beyond the line cause at the end of four years your degree won't speak anything if you don't have a job in your hand so go for it guys like you you guys have already done a lot of research you guys know about the market condition and you guys have already gone through the comp- sorry the college website so you guys know what's in there and what's not so whatever opportunity you get just hold on to it and don't let it go that's the only one it might be the only one which you get so all the best see you soon have a safe career at sea and stepping into the college is the stepping stone for a very 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 bright future that's amol patra signing off you guys can contact me anytime on facebook on instagram cheers thanks thanks uh, amol that we will pass on uh, our thanks to him may now turn back to you uh, sabil as we all know that we need more people to run a ship of the size is what we have seen so we need the support staff as well not only in the deck in the engine room and also we need someone to feed us on board we are not going to be spending all our time in cooking or now we have graduated it totally into tv meals as they call it you still there is something called a hot meal out it see so may i request now to throw some light on the training what is imparted for those boys who join as a gp rating as well as the people who come with a degree or a diploma in catering where we impart in the orientation course for catering personnel over to you sabhi okay now gentlemen we have already talked about this professional degrees bsc nautical science we take and all so normally if you see any any career guide consultancy career guidance and all they always talk about or talk for the boys who is plus 60 percent plus 70 90 95 now academical performance varies from person to person not necessary that a person who has not scored enough or a 60 should should not have any chances not necessary that a person who who could just finish 10th standard would not should not get any you know you know a flashy job gentlemen on board the ship we have already talked about navigating officer deck officers and marine engineers now a deck officer when he is navigating a ship right where 20 25 people is depending on that navigating officer and sleep peacefully you don't do it alone when you do this bridge watching bridge watch keeping you need one person to assist you who is called a navigation watch keeper assistant watch keeper yeah you need someone to take the steering we call it helm 
okay, on board the ship. Yeah? And so that he can obey my order and steer the ships whenever the navigating officer required. In engine room, when a marine engineer is, you know, doing an engine room watch keeping, when he's maintaining, taking care of, observing missionaries, he need one person to assist him. So, gentlemen, for those people, you know, who has got, scored a bit less, but still looking for a flashy career, we have a course called General Purpose Rating, we call it GP Rating, which is of a six month duration course. You know, after completing that, you can join either engine department or deck department because they will be trained to assist the officers and engineers in both departments, right? So that six month period in training includes you know, uh, deck familiarization, engine room familiarization, plus technical skills, developing technical skills, you know, which is required uh, to work. And not, it is not that as a GP rating, if you join the ship, you, there is no growth. From there, you know, with the experience and all, with the watchkeeping certificates, you know, you can upgrade to certain uh, rating ranks and reach up to petty officers. And if there are some students or some people you know, after starting a career in Merchant Navy, if they feel like they have to, you know, they, they could do well and become officer or engineer, there are provisions for that also after finishing enough sea time and, you know, appearing for exams. So that is GP rating, gentlemen, general purpose rating, right? Now, we need to eat food, right? And there are a lot of people, you know, my friends and all, they always ask me, do you always eat packet food? You know, is it always frozen? You know, you get food or not. We have a well-equipped galley, which is a kitchen, and a, a certified chief cook and steward to as assist the chief cook. So whoever has undergone a training for specializing in hotel management, catering, cooking, chefs and all, for them, we have an orientation course where we will instruct them, teach them, make them familiarize regarding the kitchen, the food culture, the nut nutrition requirements of the people on board the ship, you know, so that they can serve the tasty and healthy food for the people. Though. Thank you very much. Over to you, sir. Thanks. Thanks, Abhil. That was uh, a good opening for the people down the line as well. Now, we do conduct one more course in today's world of technology. It's not just electrical, it is electronics. Everywhere you go, the technology is moving so fast that we need someone on board with a knowledge of electrical and electronics who can look after the gadgets. You looked at the bridge over there. The bridge, what you saw over there, is, is something like, it, it's, it's there, it's got everything. It, it's a starting point. It, it's just like your uh, rocket launching. So you need people with a technical knowledge. So we do have a course who have graduated in the electrical and electronic engineering, who are given a certain amount of marine based training for them to step on board as electro technical officers. To throw some light, may I request my colleague Ganapati Rav, see what exactly what it means and how they progress in their career. Over to you, sir. Now with the modernization and uh, sizing of the ships, now ships are getting a lot of electrical and electronic gadgets. Now with the automation and artificial intelligence. So there is so much about automation. There is so much about electrical and electronic, electronic technology. So these boys with the degree in uh, BTEC or BE engineering, electrical and electronics or electronics and telecommunication we just give them an orientation course for four months at our college and their qualification is just about 50% aggregate in their engineering qualification and also English about 50%. They will be having a brief stint in our college and we'll try to orient them to purely a marine based college, a marine based aspects of it and after that they will be joining as electrotechnical officers. After finishing a specified time, they will be full-fledged electrical officers. They will be looking after the 
power aspects of shipping like shipping is a power house so we need electricity to run so many motors and so many machinery also they'll be looking after the refrigeration containerization and uh, refrigeration of uh, various cargoes which all uh, move across the continents so that is their precise job and it's a very challenging and quite a satisfying job and uh, that's also a very good career to opt for thank you mr ganapati rao we have one more uh, cadet of ours who has been sailing who has come back after stint on board and incidentally he has been lucky enough to have sailed along with his batchmate on the same ship in present days it's normally rather difficult but they have been very lucky we have cadet choudhry who has come back and may I request him to share his experience as what life has been since 2016 over to you choudhry uh, thank you very much sir uh, hello i cadet raj kumar choudhry and uh, i have joined uh, hmt college in 2016 batch with my colleague tojo vargis and uh, i am going to share my experience uh, the first question uh, was everybody asked like uh, why we choose merchant navy as why merchant navy as uh, the practical thing uh, this is the career which uh, gives us the opportunity to build ourselves uh, Uh, as an officer as our zabil sir also told this it will enhance our professionalism towards our work it uh, gives us the inspiring adventure to travel across the whole world yes yeah, this is the only career which in which we can travel across the whole world uh, it shows us the regulated lifestyle which we ever have dreamed of it gives you the lifestyle it's normal it's it's not about the normal people who are living it's it's not about the 9 to 5 job it's like we are heading a Uh, we are heading in a whole world which we which we can sail and now i have selected the bsc nautical science as a degree course like why my for pursuing my career as a deck officer and for this i have chosen the hmt college which helped me a lot during my interviews during my exam times have given me the extra times for study and uh, this this is the only college which ge- uh, which get me the chance to place in one of the best companies now why i have chosen this in this college there are so many things i can tell but uh, the thing is that the best thing i like was the disciplined culture uh, the have i got the chance to interact with one of the finest faculties here provided a uh, good study materials and a decent environment to study a uh, well organized management which support each and every student uh for right now i'm working with a mitsui osk line private limited and uh, i really had a great sailing experience i almost completed 7 months on board and i have sailed with a uh, different nationalities on board like russians and filipinos along with my uh, colleague tojo vargas um uh, i have uh, traveled almost uh, half the distance of the world and i have learned a lot about ship operations and was able to apply all the practical stuff which i learned in the hmt college to my training at on board uh, nowadays everybody has asked like uh, how we get connected to our beloved ones on board this is the this is not a big question right now like like all almost all the companies has introduced the internet systems and you can we can talk uh, at any time we want this is the only thing is uh, this is the thing which like everybody like in this field and uh, be safe thank you very much sir hey, thank you so much thank you so much uh, Chaudhary, good luck to you. Thank Have a good you. sailing, Thank and you. I'm quite sure you'll do well to get your certificates to be our colleagues in the near future. And that's what we all look for, and that's what exactly what we are all trying for. Thank you very much, sir. Now, having heard this voice, I do hope that some of you have made up your mind as what is going to be your future action. And it's also heartening to see at least. three of the boys two boys whom had an interaction with yesterday and one boy before who have joined the webinar and for the benefit of those boys it's it's only fair i repeat that we do give concessions on the on the spot booking and we have extended the on the spot booking till 1800 hours on monday which is basically the 27th of july so if you do book your seat we do give you the benefit of that for imu based courses as i said we will give you a 15000 rupees discount on the total fees and as was pointed out by mr ganapati rao we do have a one year 
a graduate course after doing your mechanical engineering. This is a graduate mechanical engineering course. We will discount 10,000 rupees and for the GP and the ETO at 5,000 rupees with the OCCP, which is essentially a one month course, we will still give you a discount of two and a half thousand rupees. Now, instead of asking you to type your questions in the chat, may I request anybody who wants to ask any questions openly, you can raise your hand and you can address the question to any of the panelists. It's all open. Can you unmute Abhishek? There are a couple yes, of them who have, yes, please. Yes, sir. My question is that uh, after uh, may, may I may may I stop you? Please show your face so that we know whom we are talking to. Sing. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Thank you. You cannot start your video because the host has disabled it. Okay. Please go ahead with your question, Abhishek. Yes, sir. My question is that, sir, after completing GP rating course. Is there any probability that not getting job or being unemployed? Hello, sir, am yeah. I audible? You are audible, uh, this thing. Abhishek, may I now yes. request uh, our uh, vice principal, Mr. Uh, Subramaniam, Captain Subra. Could you take that question, uh, Subra? Um, yes, I just got disconnected in the middle. Uh, Abhishek, can you please uh, repeat a question? Uh, sure, sir. Sir, my question is that after completing GP rating course, is there any chances or probability that not getting job or being unemployed? See, uh, Abhishek, uh, that's a that's a very uh, like, you know far-fetched question. The jobs are available in the market. It is just that it is going to all those people who are who are eligible and who are doing it uh, sincerely and uh, getting uh, like kind of like good marks and all. So it's actually up to you. I mean, if you have that uh, good inclination, if you are uh, uh, really up to it, you will do it sincerely and it will get uh, higher marks, higher grades. Uh, I mean, uh, and if you get higher grades, obviously the companies will come and select you. So it's basically your performance and uh, how you how we perform in the course, what, has, what is your uh, like history during the course and uh, how you put yourself into it. So, so don't be in a negative frame that, I mean, I will not get a job. Go with that uh, determination that yes, I will uh, complete it and I will get an A grade or A plus grade and then I will I will surely land up a job. All right, all the best. Yes, sir. Sir, may I ask one more question? Yes, please. please. Uh, sir, uh, again, I was interested for DNS course. Uh, recently, I have completed my 12 PCM with 93%. Uh, okay. Okay, uh, sir, for DNS, uh, there is requirement that you have your six by six eyesight. So my eyesight is Partially six by six. It's not completely six by six. Okay. So, am I eligible for DNS course? Uh, Abhishek, uh, HIMP does not have DNS course mainly because uh, if you go, if you go for a BSc Nautical Science, you end up with a degree. You end yes. up with a, with a graduate degree, which which adds a lot of value to your uh, education and adds a lot of value to your own future also. So, presently at in, in HIMP we don't have. You can actually try for with, a, with this kind of uh, marks what you've got. You can uh, try for BSc Nautical Science. The eyesight is not a major issue as such per se, I would say, because with the laser surgery, LASIK surgery is not, you can get it uh, back to six by six. So that will not be a uh, hindrance to your uh, C career, I would say. You can you can give a try with the BSc Nautical Science, uh, and then uh, we'll be happy uh, like uh, happy to have you on board. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, one of my brother is now on this SIMT College. Vikas okay, Sarma, great. yes, his name is Vikas that's Sarma. Great. So okay, he is doing marine engineering. Okay, okay. So, sir, I also want to do the same marine engineering also, if I know better options. Uh, Abhishek, if I may come in now. The one of the major conditions for your eyesight for out at sea is you cannot be color blind. Yes. Number two, if you are looking for a nautical side, out of the two eyes in unaided, you need to have six by six in one eye, in the other one, six by nine. As Captain Subra rightly pointed out, if it is marginal, nowadays it's very easy to get this thing corrected and continue. 
obviously there is a certain amount of relaxation in terms of a technical. If you are going to do a BTEC or GME later, there is a certain amount of relaxation. Now having said that, if you are toying and you are March what you are talking about 93, I think you are better qualified to do a graduation whether in BSc or in BTEC. We are, we are quite sure that you, you should be able to do it. To answer your question again, go back to your placement. So long you work with a single-minded approach. There is nothing that is going to stop you from landing with a job. Now the three boys whom you had listened to, they all passed out only last year and they have already completed seven months of their service. So as he said, the jobs are there. We will train you, but it is up to you, entirely up to you, how much to drink, how much to do it. I have a couple of boys whom I have interviewed yesterday, the same advice I will give it to you. If you think you are joining a ship thinking that you do not have to study, you are mistaken. You do have to study and the basics have got to remain. You need to know why a ship floats, how an engine runs without which you cannot be an engineer or nor you can be a deck officer. So, so long you have that in your mind with a lot of common sense, you can do very well out at sea. You don't have to be brilliant. Yeah? Does that answer yes. your question? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. And anybody else who wants to ha ask a question? Somebody else also raised their hand. Anita Roy. Yes, sir. So it's me. So actually, I wanted to ask that girls can do the GP rating course. Uh, Subra, will you take that? Um, in HIMP, uh, we don't take uh, the lady candidates as yet. Oh, uh, okay. But uh, but having said so, uh, I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure. I mean, uh, frankly speaking. Whether the, yes, uh, whether the companies would expect uh, uh, expect uh, lady ratings. Uh, of course, we have a lot of uh, lady officers coming up now. Yes, sir. So, I'm afraid I'm not 100% sure about it uh, right now. I think uh, my colleagues would want to uh, add on to it. I, I'm also not very sure that we can find out and let you know. But as yeah, you rightly you know. said, BSc, BTEC, DNS, everywhere or GME, you can join. GPO also. Was, but uh, as well as the uh, GP rating is concerned, so far we have not come across it, but we will check and get back to you. If you could leave your email with us, we will definitely get okay. back to you. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Urani, are you aware of this? Sir? No, no, no. I am asking yes. one of my colleagues. Yes, uh, yes sir. Good morning, ma'am. Mm. So, like around 25 percentage, if you have female students, definitely we can accept, sir. So, if you could recommend your friends for the same course, surely we'll take it up. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks so much, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks, Anita. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Are there any questions in the YouTube which need to be answered uh, by any chance, uh, Paul? So we have been answering the questions in the YouTube directly. Directly, okay, yes. fine. So there is nothing that needs to be told over here? Uh, no, sir. No, uh, they're pretty okay with that reply what they're getting. Okay, fine, perfect. So, for the benefit of people who attend this webinar, the yeah. same peculiar questions which feel like important to answer, uh, why don't you attend that so that they can write right here? They can just. Uh, yeah, you, you, you can say that, yeah, but that's not a bad idea, Subra, in case you feel that there are some questions which are common to the people who are attending here. Yeah, sure, sure. So, uh, 
what I'll do is I'll read out the questions in the in the YouTube right at the beginning. Right. Then uh, how you can take it up from there. Uh, I'll, I'll stick to the uh, the questions which are uh, kind of uh, like concerning the webinar. Right. Okay, uh, there was one uh, one query from B Boys. What is the pseudo name? I want to join Merchant Navy. What is the process of joining Merchant Ship? Okay, fine. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now I think we will have to just highlight it as as we said. Different departments have got different ways of doing it. You can do it after a plus ten, after a tenth standard, you can join as a GP rating. Or plus two, you can still do it as a deck officer doing your DNS or BSc nautical science or your BTEC marine engineering. And you can move on, suppose you want to finish your graduation in engineering and then come and do it. You can still do it as a graduate mechanical engineer and also as an electrotechnical officer. So the avenues are at varied levels starting from this. The few conditions which are very common, as we say, is that the color blindness is not at all accepted out at sea. That's something which or anyone has got to guard against. And color blindness, unfortunately, is not possible to rectify by way of any medication or surgery. There are certain conditions with, in terms of the power, what you have, and it is a little more stringent on the deck side than on the engine side. And depending upon when you are joining, what you are joining, this can be easily addressed. I hope it answers his questions. Um, yes. yes, sir. Okay. So there was a, a couple of queries regarding the eyesight. So if, uh, if you can again uh, about the powers, basically, like so a few of them are wearing specs. If you okay. Can again explain them on the eyesight, the power, basically, as to what is the minimum requirement for the deck and the engine side. Right. Okay. If you are talking about the nautical side, unaided. One eye has to have the normal, what we call a six by six. The other eye can have six by nine. That's a better eye and a little less. This is as far as the nautical science is concerned, where you depend upon your eyesight to detect any vessel out at sea. BTEC, unaided, it has got to be six by 12 in each eye. In case, it's not possible. You have an another option. You can have 6 by 9 in the better eye or 6 by 18 in the other eye. That means you have two choices. It can be 6 by 12 in each eye or 6 by 9 in the better eye and 6 by 18 other eye. What we exactly mean is this is unaided. So an engineer can wear spectacles and still step on board. But whereas in the case of a nautical science, to start with, you have to have a 6 by 6. At the most, you have specs. It can only be up to 6 by 9. Nothing beyond that. But as Captain Subra rightly pointed out, in today's technological world, a lot of things can be done. So you'll have to check and see whether it is possible to rectify and minimize your power. Right. right? There was yeah, There was another query from Purushottam. Uh, he says, uh, sir, can I join any uh, any of these BTEC or BSc after doing BBA? After doing your BBA, to some extent, yes, you can, provided you had your science up to the 12th. That PCM is a must up to the 12th. Afterwards, you have done your computer science or something you might not take into account. And you also have to fall in within the age limit of 25. If you have exceeded that, it's very difficult to join. Yes. And the PCM is on in 12th also is uh, more than 60%. Yes. It has to be absolutely, absolutely, correct. And English at least 50%, either on the 10th or on the 12th. Yes. Uh, there was a query from uh, Abhijit. He says, uh, okay, what is the difference between RPSL and IPF? Uh, Vijaya, sir, uh, can you show some light? RPSL and ITF. ITF. <laughs> okay, we, we will ask Mr. Ganapati Rao. Yes, yes. RPSL is regarding your uh, license uh, to act as a managing agent. And ITF is International Trade Federation. It's a union. 
so that speaks about uh, the uh, what you call the rights and responsibilities as a union and uh, this rpsl is the company through which uh, you will be recruited and you will be boarding the vessels most of the shipping companies will have their own rpsl or they will be employing uh, outsourcing the rpsl so they are the recruitment and placement services and itf is a union which you will be using it on board once after you join and we have uh, the parallels in india called uh, nuci or mui that's the concept so that is what it is thank you to, to add a little more to it rpsl is nothing but a license given by the director general of shipping that you are authorized to recruit people without a license you cannot even recruit anybody that is come after your maritime labor convention now as far as the international transport workers federation what we call it itf is a federation of all the trade unions across the globe which looks after the welfare of all the seafarers basically it all started with the workers federation the transport has also added into it where in the mid 80s and mid 90s the ship owners were exploiting those people on the ships which were flying what we call a flags of convenience so that is when the itf stepped in ensure that they get their rights it is basically looking after the welfare of the seamen on board a ship that's what the itf is all about yes sir So there's a uh, there's a question in the Zoom chat uh, from Rohan Garg. Uh, I think he's live, so probably we can take a live question from. Him. Yeah, yeah, he's he's one of the boys whom I had interviewed. We can we can ask him. No issues at yes, all. Yes, uh, he's live. Ro now. Rohan, uh, can you identify? You show your face and ask that question, please. Yes, 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 yes Rohan. Morning, morning. Sir, is it important to have a sponsorship before joining a college, or is it mandatory to have a sponsorship for a BSc in nautical science? Captain Subra. Um, okay, for DNS it is mandatory to have a, a sponsorship, but for BSc it is not required. It is not man. It is not mandatory. Uh, you can you can finish off the three years uh, BSc in nautical science and then uh, in one of those placements interviews you can get yourself uh, placed. So to answer your question, no, for BSc not required, but it is mandatory for DNS. Okay, thank you, sir. Mr. So in the YouTube, there are a couple of questions regarding uh, when would the courses start? When would the institutes uh, open up? Okay. Now we can only give you a sort of a vague answer to this particular question. We are guided by the directive of the Director General of Shipping, as well as for the graduate courses by the Indian Maritime University. We are also governed by the local rules and regulations. where we are placed inside the tamil nadu under the present circumstances there are no indications where we can open up the college because as you might have inferred as far as this particular course or this training is concerned that's why we call it we call it a maritime education and training there is a certain amount of practical training involved in this it's not only a classroom learning that classroom learning can still be done over the internet by way of digital but certain amount of practical training has got to be done in physical form with the social distancing which has become a norm now so people are waiting for the corona covid 19 to show a certain amount of abatement after which we hope to see that that we are given directions to open up probably following certain other norms and the normal circumstances the next course of gp should have started on the 1st of july we would have also had a concurrent batch of even eto running and probably one more of gab running and the bsc and the btech under normal circumstances the semester would have started or should be starting probably next week which is the first week of august but as of today we are still waiting for directions so in exact date it's very difficult for us to give as of now but as we go along we should be able to do it 
once we get the directions from the statutory authorities. All right. And uh, there was sir, one more question. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, sir, I have one more question. Hello, Rohan. Uh, sir, uh, due to COVID, we know there is some like job placement. There are not more job placement for cadet selection. Like if we do BSc nautical science for three year course, is there any improvement going to be in uh, in job placement for cadet selection after three years so far course? Now, Mr. Rao, you, Mr. Rao, you would like to take it maybe added by Subra later yes. because yes. now he's talking about three years from now. Yes, yes, definitely. Definitely, you see, shipping is all about uh, your uh, optimism, you know, we have perennial optimism. And uh, right now, three years from now, definitely there will be better prospectus. And right now we have uh, clouds on the horizon, otherwise it will be a broad uh, sunlight. And definitely three years from now there will be openings. And shipping is basically cyclical. So we had uh, these kind of dips way back in 76, 82 like that. So these things come up and down. We were all part of those uh, troughs, but today we are riding on a wave. So these are all uh, passing clouds. I don't think uh, we should uh, worry more about it. And this is one career where uh, you can definitely get jobs at any point of time rather than waiting in wings forever. So definitely I can forecast with my background that uh, things will bloom and uh, things will definitely look up at least uh, two to three years from now. There is no doubt about it. Yes, sir. Can you add Subra? Uh, yes. Uh, Rohan, like, uh, like Mr. Ganapati Rao said, three years is, is a long duration, long horizon we're talking about. Things are looking very bad now, but then if you join now, at about three years, like after three years, you'll be better qualified. You'll be right there at the, at the time when people are looking out for qualified people to man the ships. And uh, if you do well, if you, if you do great on your, in your, in your examinations, in your uh, academics, in your studies, then you stand a very, very good chance because uh, you are, I mean, you are you're just waiting for one vaccination to come for COVID. As soon as the vaccine comes, even the COVID situation also will open up and then it'll be business as normal. So we are optimistic about uh, about going forward. So yes, so I would suggest don't have these apprehensions. Uh, make up a mind you, and just get into it. And do it. Thank you, sir. Sabir, can you add to what you what our seniors have said? Yes, sir. Uh, Rohan, <laughs> after yes, Second hello. World War, yeah, after Second World War, that was the yes. biggest boom in shipping industry, like modern shipping industry. There was a big trade between Japan and Australia. What was the reason? Can you, can you guess why there was a big trade between Japan and Australia after Second World War? Maybe due to rising production. Because Second World War ruined Japan. You understand? Okay. So they had to yeah. start from the scratch. So they need okay. commodities, you know, they need supplies. So that, that, that was the biggest boom. That way, if you see the whole world, entire world is shut down, right? Yeah. Now to reset all and start from the zero, bring back the economy of every single country. Yeah, the commodities, the supplies is required. And who's, who's moving these supplies? 90% 90, 90 of the transportation of cargo is done by shipping industry. True ship, yeah. Correct? Yeah, and yeah. it will be a long process that bringing back the economy worldwide is a long process, Rohan. So definitely there's going to be a boom. That is what uh, people say, the expert says. One more thing is, if the current economy till now, if the cargo transport is from A to B, now we'll have intermediate A1, B2, you know, the multiple, uh, more countries will pitch it, right? So definitely the numbers are going to increase. Definitely shipping will have a boom. And you will be at the right time, you know, when people uh, need it. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah, let me let me add on. You see, seventy percent of the uh, your planet Earth is water, sea water. So there is continental ships. So the shipping has to be there. It is it is the most indis indispensable trade. And uh, because of the buoyancy, we can carry heavy cargoes at a very cheap uh, option of rates. So shipping is going to be there. 
and it is going to be there it is cyclical so definitely 3 years from hence it's going to be a bright future that's what uh, we can confidently forecast thank you thank you sir so to add to what my colleagues have said rohan the pandits talk about 2022 is going to be a turning point now you will be passing out if you join now in 2023 yeah so we all say in shipping nothing goes wrong if you are there in the right place at the right time and you happen to be in the right time now so if you want to be in the right place in 2023 the choice is yours okay. yeah all right yes sir thank you sir. okay okay right good thank you sir anything else um nothing much um cover all the chats right okay fine i mean uh, the the participants seem to be sort of uh, eased off with their questions now may I request uh, mr durga prasad to give the closing comments please mr durga prasad to all, all those present here parents ch children st ex students it's uh, good to listen to all the people talking uh, yes you must have heard lot of things are said about shipping shipping is a very interesting career and very vibrant one i would say it's a very vibrant career and this is the career which makes him a boy for to a man to a human being that's what i am i would like to say it will make you a good human being so parents be assured it will be a disciplined life out at sea it will be a very good life be it in engineering side or in the nautical side both are well and saying well balanced now coming to these graduations at bsc and btech in engineering bsc in nautical sciences as you all know there are two aspects to this career one is pre c training second one is post c pre c is that you will study in a college like hmt and get your degree then you go and pursue your career out at sea and earn your competencies that's it the pre c degrees are awarded by universities as you all know universities are allowed to give you the degrees and competencies as everybody has told which earns your uh, professional career path and may take you to the highest ranks in the merchant navy be it a master mariner or a be it a chief engineer and the certificates are given by the director general of shipping so the whole these c courses are run under the control of dg shipping because there is something called an international maritime organization which gives the directions through which the things are brought down so it's a truly international profession now coming to the basic degree where you get basic degree is a main thing which you should understand getting a degree now we, as you know there are so many universities in all over india private state run central etc but there is only one university which is dedicated to the maritime that is indian maritime university to which hmt is affiliated now this facility added to the facilities of training state of the facilities for training and very good faculty gives a good rating for hmt as a as an affiliated institute of indian maritime university further the hmt has other people have already told also is conducting post sea courses and has got a 22 years of this thing therefore it's always preferred that you start your pre c career with an institute which is affiliated to a central university and therefore now that you have made up your mind and start getting prepared to get enrolled into hmt and have a good life ahead thank you very much thank you, thank you uh, mr durga prasad now with that we come to the end of this webinar Yes, Viraj. I don't mind answering that question. You have raised your hand. Can we unmute him? Yes, Viraj. Hello, sir. Yes. Can you identify yourself? Uh, good morning, sir. Myself, Viraj. Yeah, Viraj. Uh, sir, there is a eligibility for an ETO course mentioning that you can do a diploma in Tripoli with a sixty percent. Yes. So my question is: Is there any issue after a diploma aspirant joining an ETO? 
Okay. So yeah, that I want to know that if there a company it may it will make any problem if you are a diploma aspirant, not an B Tech. Okay, first three years diploma with a sixty percent marks, or four yeah. years degree including lateral entry, both are eligible as well as the ETO is concerned. Yes. So you can have either of that. See. The point is the entry level is fixed by the director general of shipping. Okay. It is not fixed by any company. Okay. If we do take an ETO, then we are going to issue a certificate, which is given, which is based on the instructions and the directive given by the director general of shipping. And no shipping company can say we will not touch you because you are a diploma holder. That doesn't happen. Is am I right, uh, Subra, in this particular aspect? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, actually, it, it depends on the shipping company. Also, depends on their internal policies as to whom to employ. But having said so, we have uh, placed a lot of uh, diploma holders in ETO, and uh, yeah, ultimately, basically, what they look for is the experience, and uh, they look for the kind of uh, the marks what you what you've got. They also have their own uh, the the interviews process. So if you can convince those uh, your, those officers, the company officers there, and you do well in the in, in the, the placement interviews, then the diploma is not an issue at all. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. So that was my question. That company will not make any problem for. One or two companies diploma. have their own policies, internal policies that they will only take uh, uh, like electrical uh, triple E uh, engineers and all. But they're not yes, many, yes. not many. So the the uh, the options are wide open, and you can uh, freely take up. Okay, so my option was only for HMT College that I yeah. know. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. So welcome on board, and hope to see you on board soon. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Viraj. Thanks so much. Thank you, sir. If there are no other questions, we would like to close the webinar with a big, big thank you to all of you who have taken the time off to be part of us. And uh, if you have hesitated to ask any question, please feel free to send in your questions. And all those boys who have already attended the interview, or some of you have already booked, I hope we have satisfied your curiosity or kindled the interest in you to pursue in your career out at sea. And we can assure you that. The life in HIMT is going to be as exciting as you would expect that to be. And the career what you might land up with is cannot be compared with anything which is normally what you get assured. Good luck to all of you and I thank all my colleagues for having supported in this particular thing, including the people behind the scene who are the technical team, as well as my colleagues in the admin and admission department. Thank you very much. Hope to see you all very soon in HIMT. God bless. Jai Thank you. Thank you, sir. And a special thanks to Tojo Chaudhary. <laughs> yeah. Good to see you, man. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, we go all the way lot. back. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Good luck. God bless you guys. Keep in touch. We really appreciate what thank you thank guys you. have contributed. And what, what you have spoken is also from your heart. Very nice of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.